Good evening. Um, so, um, before I start, so tonight's topic is going to be about programming with uh, dplyr. So, how you can write functions that use dplyr functions inside of them. Uh, but before that, I would just like to um, ask you to fill out the survey that I started today. It's about uh, typing speed and keyboard layouts. So I will link it in the description below. So um, it's it will take you two minutes. So there's a one minute typing test. You just input your words per minute. You input your score and you just answer some basic questions. OK, what's the keyboard layout you use? What is the language you type um, most in? So English, French or whatever. Um, and what's your job if you want? So the job is optional, but it'd be great because it would allow me to kind of look at uh, if there is any difference depending on the job. So I'll link that in the description. Um, so it would be great if you could uh, fill out that survey. Another thing is that we are approaching 500 subscribers. I will make a very, very special video once we hit 500. Maybe I'll even release it a little bit before, but if you're not subscribed yet, maybe if you find these infos, um, these videos useful, and um, the infos I share useful, well, maybe consider subscribing. So, uh, something else before we start. Um, the um, two, three videos I did um, just before this one and the blog post I wrote on um, quotures attracted a lot of uh, attention, a lot of feedback. I got a lot of feedback, which is great. Um, I will address that. So, I've already answered to the, to the people in writing, but I think it would be interesting to remake a new video um, where I um, discuss the feedback that I got. So, th because there is a way of actually doing what I did without quotures, but I still think that there is um, an advantage in using quotures, and I just w kind of want to explore that and maybe get then uh, you know a new discussion going. So, it'd be great. It, I think it was the first time that uh, one of my videos and blog posts um, attracted so many so much feedback. So, it, it's, it's great. It's really a great thing. I'm really enjoying that. So tonight's topic, uh, programming with dplyr. So the idea is, so if you've, start, if you've watched this channel um, since the beginning, you've seen me write a lot of code where I use dplyr function, uh, I mean tidyverse functions, um, functions from dplyr, functions from pur, etc. Um, I've always, I think, used them in a um, data exploration interactive way. So I write code, I run it, I look at the results, I rewrite some code, I run it, etc. However, of course, you could, instead of running your code interactively, you could write some functions that you call at very specific um, points in time, so maybe once a week or every day or whatever. These are functions that will run something that you need to run, um, and it's always the same, and you need to run that very often. So it's if you if you have code that needs to run a lot of times, it's best to put that into, into a function and then just call that function. And maybe you, you want to, uh, you know, let that function uh, run in some kind of server maybe that will uh, extract some data from, from a database, run your R code, maybe it's uh, running a model or it's plotting some stuff, whatever. Um, there's many use cases for that. I will show you how you can write a function using dplyr functions or more generally, I, I don't think every tidyverse function would work yet, but um, I think dplyr for sure, tidier for sure, per as well, I think, and ggplot. So you have, I think, the most important functions, but probably the others as well now. Um, let's take a look at what I want to do. So I just want to show you, um, so the, the problem I have, let's say, let's imagine, the problem I have is the following. I have a population and I know the characteristics of this population. So I know how many men and women there are. I know in this case here what their religion is and maybe some other variables. Okay, so I know that. I know that because we can imagine because it's census data. Okay, so I know that from the National Statistical Institute. They run these censuses every 10 years or so or five years or whatever. And I have these general characteristics of my population. Now imagine that I run a program and people can voluntarily apply to this program and every week I get a new batch of people that applied and that um, went through this program, okay? And every week I want to look 
at my sample and I want to see how different it is from my population and I want to do that according to several variables race religiosity or religion or whatever um, but it could be anything else could be age could be um, citizenship um, could be I don't know uh, job title whatever you want and whatever you need okay um, so let's imagine that so I, I for that I use the GSS cat data Maybe let's take a look at it first. Um, so this just gives um, for uh, several types. Maybe let me put my face up here. So this is one person. So um, that person uh, is uh, white, 26 years old, never married. The year uh, that this was recorded was the year 2000. Has an income between uh, 8,000 to something. Doesn't really matter. Is an independent. Protestant, Southern Baptist, I guess. I don't know. I'm not very familiar with uh, American denominations. And then how many hours that person watches, I guess, I hope, per week. Because if that's per day, that's a lot. Doesn't really matter. Um, we can imagine that these 21,000 persons are our whole sample, okay? Or rather, our population. We can imagine, let's assume this is our population, okay? Um, and this is, in this case, microdata. So I have the microdata of all the population, okay? Could happen in some instances. Um, and imagine that these are two samples, okay? This is the sample of the year 2000, this is the sample of the year 2002, but it doesn't matter. You Let's assume it's a weekly sample, week one, week two. Doesn't matter. Maybe I'll rename that. Uh, it's just to illustrate my uh, my code doesn't really matter uh, if it's uh, week one week two or whatever now um, this here the frequency of th of the um, of the race and the frequency or oh, actually this is not very the frequency of the religion so these are the characteristics that interest me in the whole population okay so i know in the whole population i have you know, uh, as many uh, white, black, and um, other types of races of people. It's very, you know, just as a, as a parenthesis, this race type of variable is always very uh, confusing to us Europeans because we don't have such variables in our in our data. I mean, if you're working with, uh, you know, if you're a social scientist or an economist, you you never have a variable like that. Maybe in the UK, I guess they have something like that. Um, but yeah, in continental Europe, you never see that. Anyway, um, and religiosity as well. So maybe let's add a little bit more of, um, maybe let's add the total, which will be simply the sum of n, and maybe add also the frequency, um, you know, just to illustrate. And maybe let's call that frequency in pop yeah i guess that's uh, not a bad idea to add let's do the same down here so let me just correct this yes okay so this should now look better uh oh yeah that's because i have the i uh, wrongly named this thing yeah so now i have my uh, my religion and uh, most people are uh, Protestants. So I guess, yeah, it's probably US data than Catholics and so on, than none, um, and so on. Okay, very, very interesting. Uh, same for the uh, race now. I also have my percentages here. Okay, that's great. Now, I want to every week, so now I have two weeks of data. I have my week one and my week two. But maybe, you know, this is a program that maybe lasts for a whole year, so I'll have 52 data sets, and I have every week to compute this thing, but in my uh, samples. So I wrote here a little function, but maybe before looking at the function, let's just, uh, you know, look at what I need to do. So if I could, you know, simply basically copy and paste this thing, and this should give me what I want. So this is the frequency, okay, in that uh, week, okay, in that week. And I want to compare that to, um, let's say, the religiosity 
in my population. So it should be very similar, I guess. Uh, well, there is there are some differences, but uh, shouldn't change too much. But you know, maybe if this were, was a real example, maybe every week you'll have very different types of uh, of people joining your program. Maybe because of holidays, you'll have um, younger people coming students maybe during the holidays and then during you know the work uh, i don't know maybe in winter you'll have uh, less people just because it's cold outside something like that so maybe you'll have something very different every week and um, doesn't matter again so if i want to do that every week i would need to copy and paste this code every time and i would do i would have also to copy and paste it for every variable that i want so here i only have two but maybe i have dozens of variables that i need to look at okay and, or maybe I just have a much more complex example than this. So you could be tempted to write a function that would look something like this. Okay. So what this function does is it takes as an input my sample data frame and a variable. Let's see what happens if I try to run this. Let's see what happens. So I take my GSS cat week one and I take, so the variable I want is relic, for example. And it's not working. Um, so R is complaining that variable is not found. So this is weird because uh, you know I gave my variable here. Uh, it's def well defined. There's there isn't a typo here. So this um, this should work. Okay. The problem why this is this isn't working is the following count here. Okay, and it could be any any dplyr function okay could be group by could be uh, summarize could be select filter whatever this function here is not looking for relic or relig it's looking for a variable called variable literally called variable in my data frame sample df so this variable does not exist so this is looking count is looking in sample df for the variable called literally variable so i need count to understand that this is not the variable's name or this is not the variable itself rather the variable is what i give here okay so um i think if i look at in i'm not sure if this is going to work but let's try i think if i look at environment uh, it's null Hmm, it's not exactly, or is it env? I don't know. Um, there is a way, I think, to look basically at um, the environment. So I think if you do ls, this is just going to list. Yeah, so this is going to list the um, the variables. I think there's a way to look at the data frame as an environment because it's kind of what's happening here. So this is count is not looking at let's say your uh, global environment or or what you defined here but it's looking at as i said a variable called variable inside sample df and this variable does not exist so you'll you have to do a little change here which is to say that variable must be quoted so this goes back a little bit to the quo function that i showed in my previous videos Okay, but this is not quo, this is n quo. And um, I'll, I'll show you the difference, or I'll explain the difference in a bit. But let's first try to run this. Now this is working. So I did two things. First, I used n quo on my variable. Second, I used this, this is also a function called bang bang, that unquotes this variable. So I don't, on, to be quite honest, I don't know the exact mechanics under the hood, what's really going on. I think this is probably very complex, but in a sense, what's happening here is that this is creating, okay, this variable now is a quasar, and it gets here evaluated, okay, or I guess instantiated, if I want to use the same words as in my previous video. But here, count knows, oh, I have to replace, you know, this thing, okay, this variable name, I have to replace it by what the user gave me, being religiosity or religion, okay? And I know that this is something that is here, because I'm looking for relig now, I'm not looking for var variable, I'm looking for relig. Let's try 
outside of a function. So if you're doing that outside of a function, you have to use quo. So that's why you use quo. Quo is outside of a function and quo is inside of a function. So if I just type something like quo variable, okay, this is a quotient. And by the way, variable does, is not defined in my global environment. Variable does not exist, but this doesn't matter for quo. It just becomes a quotient. Now, if I evaluate that, so let's try, I don't know, I think I can use parentheses and should, oops, should work. Um, yeah, so they can only be, okay, so this is, but well, it's, it, it wouldn't work because a variable does not exist, but this can only be unquoted in a, a they say in a quasi quotation context, basically inside a, like another dplyr function. So yeah, if you run this in the environment, it's not going to work. This is what they explain here. So if you run this inside mutate, it's going to work. Anyway, what's important to remember is that if you want to grab or work with a, um, to, to work with variables from your data frame you need this in quo bang bang trick or workflow there's <clears throat> something else i want to show you yeah and then and then you could you know just to to finish you could run then this uh, if i go now with uh, what was the other one um with race so this is now you know doing the race thing oh and by the way i could also then because this is not exactly computing what I wanted but I could now just you know run this and maybe instead of pop in sample and uh, yeah I get my frequency in my sample and if I compare that to the frequency in the population I see some slight differences okay so now I could merge these data sets I could actually write a new function that would take both these data sets as an input merge them and you know maybe show that in a plot etc Something else I want to show you is, you know, maybe I need something a bit more complex. So let's paste that down here. Maybe I need something um, with two variables. Maybe I want to count over two dimensions, okay? So instead, so I will just rename this here, and instead I will now use quos. I will now use quos. So this will create a list of quotients, and I will unquote, oops, I will unquote that with three bang bangs. So let's see how this goes. So compute frec in sample two, GSS cat one, let's go with race and with relig, and it's not working, and the reason, oh yeah, uh, it's not working because uh, actually I need to call this dots because and I will explain why I need to put in dots and what are the dots and now it's working so why didn't it work before why is it working now so let's go back to before so before I had one variable well I used the plural but it's still one variable called simply variables this uh, this is a single variable and quos expects uh, uh, several variables so the dots what the dot uh, 